Hi everyone, I hope you're good guys and welcome to a new video. So today I'm gonna go through my Melody Techno 3 Ableton template. This template I've been creating during my live stream session on my Ojoric YouTube channel. I do live stream every two Sunday so you can come and join me and I create the template live from scratch. Yeah, today I'm gonna go over each track and explain you what it does, how it's been made and the MIDI note. Next week we're gonna go more about the arrangement, the automation, variation, mixing and mastering. So first let's have a listen to the track. So I'm gonna start at the end of the break because the break is kind of long but it's gonna give you an idea of the track anyway first track is the sidechain so it's basically it's just a, a, a track with a 909 clap and i use it as a trigger for my sidechain compression so it's a very sharp and short transient it's gonna trigger my sidechain very fast then i have the kick drum so kind of a classic kind of 808 clicky kick uh, this sample is from my sub 37 techno bank and eq so i use a locket right under where there is the kick just to get rid of the unnecessary frequency and just to boost a little bit there. This shell here is just because the drum is playing at this place, so it's kind of a missing purpose. I kind of remove it. As a solo, it doesn't really make any sense, but in the context of the mix, yes. And then it's just like accentuating the click. And then timing a little bit the very high frequency. It's not much processing, to be honest, with the kick. And then I just add a reverb. It's just to make it a little bit less dry. It makes, again, more sense in the context of a track. Just help the kick cut to the mix, give a bit of air to the kick, and then it's just like boost 6 dB, bass in mono. Then we have the tom. And so you have your kick here, and you can see it's playing right just before the second kick, and right after the second kick, and it's got this nice movement, obviously the delay. Kind of add this repetition and again a bit of reverb bass in mono then we go into the hat i have a close eye hat and i have a another close eye hat that i would consider more like an open hat here i don't have any tips you can see there is absolutely no processing on the hat it's just like no eq or no distortion or nothing it's just like I've just shortened a little bit the GK here for the close I had and it goes into you can see a send here which goes into the reverb close so I will put it in the description if you want to find out more about this rack it's just a rack I made to make my life easier where I have macro where I can control the GK of my hat I can control the tune of the ride and I have reverb preset good for drums that can just send I have delay as well yeah the interesting thing here is more about the pattern so you have 16 close I had pattern classic but you can see you have kind of a roll here The t -t 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 -t. here and here you can you heard the open hat you have t -t -t moving it's I, I didn't want it to overdo it but i just wanted to add a bit of variation to avoid to have something too straightforward so here you can see the pattern is pretty straightforward pretty robotic the thing i've done is i've used the groove uh the groove pool and you can see how each cloth i had is slightly shift a little bit from the grid to avoid to be too mechanical and the other thing i've done i use this velocity midi device which is the preset add some random which is gonna slightly add some random in terms of velocity so it never is gonna be the same velocity at each hit then you have some shaker so for the sound itself it's a layer sound so what i like to do with i call it shaker it's not really a shaker but kind of shaker sound i like to layer different kind of hats with more some like textural hats some more noisy some more percussive so see it's more like kind of granular noisy and i like to layer them all together and the pattern so what i've done here is i've, I've made a driving pattern and it's kind of a shaker sound pattern and 
the trick here is to have this kind of crescendo pattern you see the velocity is going up and down so the one i like is where you kick is gonna hit and you can see the one exactly off beat is stronger than the other one and it's go up down up down up down and that's what gives this driving effect one thing i forgot to mention what i've done for each sample is i set an attack around 30 milliseconds so it's got this aspiration effect to your hats and instead of having a very percussive hat you have more like kind of a shaker sounding hat and then instead of process it's just has effect that i've done with the gle plugin is there with from mono to stereo to have it the shaker more on the side side and compression for this pumping effect and a bit of reverb then you have perk this is just a perk i filter it kind of a woody kind of percussion and I have this one which is basically exactly the same sample that I frozen and flattened and I actually reverse it because I wanted to do something else but it was sounding good like this so I actually left it like this and it give a bit of width variation to you perk. And finally I have the clap which to be fair sound in solo sound kind of horrible i haven't done anything with the sample but add a bit of reverb but the clap in context of a track uh sound way much better <laughs> was matter all right let's move into the bass so the track is in f minor and so you have the root here and it's going an octave upper then back to the root then g sharp which is the third but you see on the second octave then go back to the root on the lower octave and then it's going on the fifth but to the third octave and then it's exactly the same pattern but you can see that you have some double note And basically, I, if I remember well, I played that live with the push and I just like it, the recording, how it was sounding and I just keep it. For the sound itself, you're going to see it's kind of a basic sound. So again, here's some random just to change the velocity a little bit. So the patch, I just used the Sopus with Zetune, just one oscillator. And you have the sub as well. And it's going through a low pass filter, which is modulated by an envelope. <laughs> The envelope is give this pluckiness, so it's important to have like bring down a little bit of sustain in order to. You see here you don't have any dynamic, but as much as you reduce a little bit of sustain, it gives more amplitude to your amp and get this plucky effect. So I choose the Prodigy 24 dB at a bit of drive. Add a bit of resonance, always some resonance. I like to use it in a subtle way, like just to accentuate sometimes a little bit the tone of your filter. You don't want to overdo it because it might sound too acid or even in some case you might lose a little bit of your low end if you crank up the resonance too much. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Then I slide, put it in mono, add a bit of glide, but then section compression. Saturator medium curve just to add some harmonics, a little bit of beef and a hybrid reverb. And I use the convolution only. Real place, I need church. Uh, I reduce the decay probably. And I EQ a little bit just to get rid of the low frequency and the very high frequency that can very noisy sometimes and a bit messy. And EQ, so here the Jeep here, it's exactly the same reason is for the tone to leave some space, but I will come back to this next week. And just a little boot around 3 kHz just to help cut through the mix doesn't do much to be honest and then put your bass in mono and yeah obviously you have to play with the tom the tom has a very big importance in the bass line right let's jump into the arp
So basically, this arpeggiator is kind of a phantom track, like the kind of track that is there without being there. It's just a bit of harmonics, but it's mixed in the way that you don't really hear it, uh, except if you really pay attention. But if I remove it, you will feel it's missing something. About the MIDI pattern, I'm gonna it's following the main chord progression, so I'm gonna come back when I talk about the lead just right after. And so in terms of sound, so you have an arpeggiator obviously to create the melody from the chord. And few things about this sound, so first the waveform you use, so this is something very important, especially with wavetable, that's what's gonna give the character of your sound. So for example, if you choose the quad, so choose... You can see if I use the normal, so choose this kind of sound different so i don't have any expl explanation there is some favorites of mine which are the quads so the soul persuade they tune which is great the pulse dual the pulse persuade um i mean they're all kind of great it really depends what you want to do but yeah this is kind of one of i like a lot and so it's going through a low pass filter 24 db prodigy style a bit of drive again you see and no reason at this time but it's going heavily filter and here it's in mono and you can hear the glide if i remove the glide you have this kind of slight pitch modulation between each note in order to do that you have to have your arpeggiator with the gates more than i think it's 95 or 100 or 105 percent otherwise you will get something you will not get the glide and then it's just a bit of eq Saturator to make things louder. It's the same reverb, but this time with a longer decay because, like I said, as it's not an important element, you can put it more in the background, so longer decay of your reverb, a bit more dry wet. Here again, just like to get rid of this mess here. But when I play in, into the truck, you're gonna see. some harmonic content all right now let's move into the main lead which is this rattle chord Right, so let's talk about this is the kind of the main melody and it's kind of a chord progression but obviously because of this harp and this rattle kind of weird effect you can i use it as the main lead so the chord progression you have your first chord which is sounding like this it's kind of a classic f minor chord where you have your your f the root note you have g sharp which is the third minor and then you have c which is the fifth and then you have again the root and the third an octave upper and the second one is exactly the same chord except that i've had the six here which is like plus eight semitone so you see you c sharp here which is he playing there and it's kind of giving a weird Kind of giving a weird feeling, but otherwise you can see you have C like here and you have F and G sharp and then you have the third one which is a C minor and you have your C and you have your D sharp here which is the third from the C but the minor seven from your F, your root note and then you have G which is your second and then the last one, which is A sharp minor chord, where you have your A sharp root here, and you have C sharp, which is the third, and F, which is the fifth of your A sharp minor. And so it's quite a long progression, but it's because of all of the automation. Uh, you can see here, I've talked about the chord progression, but now about the sound. If you remove the arpeggiator, obviously you will have something very short. And here the trick is to use the arpeggiator to have this kind of rattle effect. So it's in chord mode and I'm going to automate the rate. So sometimes to go for something very fast. So the chord we play a lot of time in a short amount of time. Or sometimes I will slow down the rate when the chord is going to play every, for example, second. And it goes out. You see, you can play every second or you can 
at the beginning it's super fast so I've automated that I'm getting slower and then faster again and then slower again and then very fast And I kind of create my pattern like this with automating the rate. It's kind of quite crave the, the groove and the rhythm. Obviously, you can see there is way much more automation going on. I'm not going to spend too much time today on it. I will talk about it next week. But that's what's gonna really going to add some variation and avoid to have always the same kind of sound. Here again, I use the random velocity to avoid to have always the same velocity for the chord. And what I've done as well, I slightly shift it, if not for each chord so this way you know it's more natural way rather than the robotic midi pattern right and in terms of sound i use basically one of my rock which is cosmic plug the rock i've made for kind of make plucky noisy sound but i kind of switch it a lot so don't really pay attention about the rock and i'm gonna start from scratch but it's basically again it's about picking up the right wave table which is gonna sound very rich in a harmonic a bit hollow as well if i change the wave doesn't sound the same and going through low pass filter 24 db mook produce a bit of drive no resonance as usual you can hear there is as well some filter modulation here because you want something very plucky with no sustain and a short decay here the attack decay and the release of the amplitude are mapped to the macro so this way later on i will be able to automate and to have sometimes longer attacks sometimes shorter decay to have an even more pluckier and sharp sound the release map to the decay as well and it's in poly mode because obviously you play chords and i just add a bit of randomness here on the filter the amp and slightly on the pitch just to give this analog feel where each hit is gonna be different slightly different so again it's to avoid this robotic effect then what i've done is i add vocoder is just to add a bit of noise so it does work better if I add a bit of reverb first. And I was talking about the wavetable. This wavetable here plus dual work really well with a bit of noise. It kind of enhance it somehow. Then I have amp. Amp's gonna add a bit of grit and accentuate this noise. Make it a bit more brief, a little bit more, more airy. Then I have a phaser. So here the phaser doesn't work like a normal phaser. This is a preset that I use often. I use it as an enhancer again. I couldn't explain you what it does exactly, but it got a phaser effect in the way that it's not your classic phaser effect, but it's enhanced the sound somehow. I don't know the sound is a bit brighter there is less low mid and yeah it's a bit more clear then saturation just to add some just to add some harmonics to form loudness purpose you can see here you can barely hear it because i the output minus eight so kind of gain compensate even a bit more than what i should but yeah then i pass it here just to be sure i don't have all of the mid low frequency A delay but this one a bit low usually i will go for the three one which is pretty fast and then i like to go like this with two and five so this way slower and yeah it just give different vibe and the reverb i use the time the algorithm uh, in tight mode uh, with the current three seconds size over 50 percent if you want to find out more about hybrid reverb i've made a tutorial where i explain everything and how i like to use each parameter so yeah one important thing again i filter your reverb so that's this way you don't have the noisy of the reverb and you don't have the rumble of your reverb and i put the stereo a bit more so it's widen your signal a little bit Just make it slightly more stereo. Just the final EQ, just to be sure to get rid of the low mid you don't need, and a little bit to cut the high that gets a bit too noisy. And boost around 3 kHz just to add a bit of clarity to your sound. And then just some volume automation because there is some parts where I found it a little bit too loud. Yeah, I will come back to this next week. But yeah, that's for the lead. Then let's go into the voice. 
So I thought this was included in Live 11, but actually it's a pack you have to buy, which is called Voice Box. So if you don't have it, I've printed an audio version so you can anyway still use it. This rack is coming with different kind of phrase with the root, the minor, third, and I kind of try to play and follow and find one which was fitting well. My chord progression and yeah, I come to going into a lot of delay and reverb obviously the reverb is super important here I use the shimmer from the hybrid reverb and yeah long decay a bit of damping just to reduce the high frequency a little bit I didn't really use the sh shimmer like with in the pitched effect and here I have automation here to get a kind of it's an auto pan and you're gonna hear with kind of a sotus and you can hear already it's kind of a scatter effect a bit subtle but it's just to add a bit of variation i i do it just during the break i don't do it in the rest of the track as you can see it's just during the break it's add a bit of bit of variation and then it's just some volume automation then you have pad break so the chord progression again it's followed the same than the lead same for the up i didn't show it but it was the same and you remember when I was saying that the break missed a little bit of body and the pod was perfect to add a bit of more harmonic content and make it a little bit more present and heavy more importantly to avoid to feel very weak so for your pad the best way is usually one oscillator with sotus you put a second oscillator with another sotus sometimes an octave upper like here slightly detuned to get a richer sound so you got this detune effect, add a bit of noise. And I'm just gonna add the saturator and the reverb like this, you hear better the slight detail. Make things louder. Put it in the bigger space. So yeah, both your oscillator are going into a low pass filter uh, with a slow attack. So this way you got your sound coming progressively. And the amp is pretty similar as well. Here the only particularity you have LFO, uh, you can slightly modulate the filter. There is a bit of delay in attack so you don't hear it straight away but yeah. You have a little bit of movement. Here what does all the job is the the reverb the shimmer reverb from the new hybrid reverb and pretty long decay six seconds and here i use the shimmer and yeah a bit of eq as well to get rid of the very high frequency and the low stereo again i love this feature in the hybrid reverb because it's really can you have if you have a very mono sound you can use this reverb any algorithm or, or convolution in post response and then add a bit of stereo and to your reverb and it really widen your sound all right and then after it's just a low pass filter to kind of kind of automation more it's more like for arrangement purpose like bring the pad in or out then you have send break so this is uh Again, like I said, my break sounded a bit weird and I needed to add some layer to fill up the blank a little bit. And this is just like to add tension as well. So fill up the blank, but add tension is like something very repetitive and I automate the filter. So like this, it rise the tension. Patch is pretty simple. Again, it's 16 arpeggiator. So you got the tick, 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 But it's going through a low pass filter, 12 dB this time, a bit of drive. It's modulated by the envelope too, which is pretty plucky as well. You see no sustain, short GK. There is a slight LFO modulating the pitch, kind of very gentle vibrato. But here the shimmer gives as well a bit of character. But what's gonna give as well, it's you a uh, chorus. It's got this detune excitement effect classic to a chorus and yeah. Kind of a basic sound, but in the context of the track. Now 
Now if I remove it... It adds tension it and then you have two horns which are always playing in the same time this is just like for the drop or like for the transition it's always nice to help introduce new elements so here what's character is the sound first is the waveform is important the kind of rectangle waveform so three shape the unison in shimmer is very nice for this kind of pricey effect obviously you want to filter things and yeah you want attack straight away and you sustain up so this is like really this kind of brassy full in your face and you can hear you have a bit of modulation going on so it's going fast up and then going down slowly and then just jump us to beef things up then i will filter and add a bit of resonance to a frequency which i will find enhance the sound And then the reverb is very important. I use the convolution reverb, pretty loud. This one usually I will put the horn more in the front, but these two they are more like in the background, uh, more like kind of to support the track. The second one, again you see I use the same kind of the same waveform. I have two oscillators. This time I don't have the sub, but I have a sawtooth there because I slightly detune. And again going through low pass filter, a little bit of envelope. Here it's. It's more kind of a bracy horn because of the attack at 30 milliseconds. But you can see again unison. Uh, it's the same principle. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it, but you need obviously to play a low note, usually F0 or F1, it works. It works well for the break because it adds tension, you know, it's like kind of a low hit uh, cinema. The release is pretty long this way. Especially for the break, it's nice because you have it lasts longer. And then it fades gradually, so it's way much more smoother. But I use it as well for the drop. Without. Once again, it's pretty subtle, but it, when you remove it, you feel it's missing something. All right, now let's jump into our SFX. You see there is quite a lot of SFX and you have Vox SFX sound like... Like this. You have your noise, hat SFX1, hat SFX2. You can see they are all pretty much looking the same. You have your SFX lead. which this one sound you can hear its reverse effect and basically for all of this sfx the two last the, the method is very simple you take a one shot of your original track you dip it into a lot of reverb with a lot of dry wet a long decay and you freeze flatten and then you duplicate and reverse it and the good thing about that is because you recycle element from the track it's gonna sound good and it's gonna do the job and then you have the two last one which are kind of sfx this one it's kind of a scent SFX and you can hear it's kind of a moogie sound quite resonant so here what you need is to have your filter with quite some resonance if I remove it lose all the character I have a look at as well it's like similar to your EQ here but and you can see here there is a nice movement that it's automation that I've made manually Otherwise, it's, it's just sound very flat and boring. And the second. So here we have Sotus and some noise going through low pass filter. And you can see the attack is one second and a very sharp decay. So it's like open slowly, but close very fast. And that's perfect for transition. And another thing is you can hear there is a bit of LFO as well on the filter. And here the LFO there is some delay and some attack. So it, the modulation on the filter doesn't start straight away. So first you have your filter opening normal. But then after it starts to move. 
pretty frustrating subtle, but it does the job. And then it's just some saturation and reverb. Again, the shimmer reverb. And yeah, this really helped the transition. So then I have sub mix down and mix down. So if you want to find out more why there is sub mix down and mix down, I'll put it in the description and explain in one of the video. But in a nutshell, I like to have some DJ FX, let's say on my master, but I don't like them to be on my master track because my master track is only for mastering. So because of that, I need to create a kind of a pre master, which I call mix down and where I'm going to put all of my DJ effect. But sometimes I like as well to take my whole mix and to send it to a return, which is what I'm doing here. But in order to have the return as well being affected by my my DJ master effect, I need to create a pre pre master that I can send on the return that then going to my pre master with the SFX. This way, everything which is going in this return, it's going to be affected by my master DJ FX. So this, I use it with the return. Basically this return, it's a rack from make a transition. I put it in the description if you want to find it. It's, I just like it. It just work. It's simple, but work well. It's just some reverb. But what I like to do is send my whole mix into this return. It's kind of create a washout effect and it lasts longer and yeah. It's perfect for transition or to build tension. And then you have on the mix down, you have two look cut. So you have one at the beginning for the intro. I chose the second one because at the intro, I wanted to cut the frequency, but I didn't want it to cut them too much. I will come back to it next week why I've done that. But then I have a look, second look at later on the track, which is a bit more stronger. See this one. And then I have this riser, which is kind of a DJ effect. It's kind of a washout, similar to what I've got to a return, but on my master. And it's just add a lot of delay reverb. But I've used it in a very subtle way for this track. Um, but again, if you remove it, you can feel like it removes some of the tension. It, it really helped to rise and build the tension. All right. And then my master effect where well, I will come back next week. How I, I master the track. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today. I hope you learn a few tricks here and there. If you want to grab the template, it's a great way to support me. The link in the description. And see you next week for part two for mixing, mastering, automation, arrangement, the idea of the track. Uh, yeah. Thank you for watching. See you guys. Bye bye.